Hey everybody, Martin Chuck here, and this episode is a start of a series all about speed, because let's face it, that's all anybody is talking about right now. I'm so excited to do this with you. Before we get started, just looking at the tour event, how about Xander Shoffley? Xander Shoffley went off and shot 29 on the front nine in Vegas. A buddy of mine got to play in the Pro-Am with Colin Morikawa the other day, and, he's, and this is a, a PGA member of pal of mine, he was a good player. And he said the greens are so hard and the rough is so deep. And it's just a testimony to how good these players are. You know, to shoot 29, uh, and then he, on the back nine, he's just, just a bunch of pars. But, you know, Xander Shoffley, Mr. Tyrrell Hatton, Mr. Hoodie. And there's a lot of talk about whether hoodies are okay for the game. I say, you know what, be comfortable, wear what you want. You know, in Wimbledon back in the day, you had to wear white everything. Nowadays, come on, let's be honest. Let's have a little fun. But the scoreboard's all over there. So I look forward to seeing what happens today in Las Vegas. Let me put this down. Let's talk about speed, but see the cocktail of the day, the Hanma Happy Hour cocktail here is a little margarita. Mm. Breakfast margarita, of course. So we're going to talk about speed and to, and to get swinging your fastest, you have to stretch out. I've got the plane mate on and you can see there's my plane mate on my belt. It's a little hard to see. I've got a you know, dark outfit on, the playmate's dark, but I take a look. I've got it attached to my wrist with a, with a wrist strap. And what we're going to do is stretch out a little bit because I want to get you teaching you how to super smash it. Because think about it, you've been watching Bryson DeChambeau for a number of weeks. A bunch of tour players have been teasing you with their data on their foresight and their track man. And I think Rory hit a 191 mile an hour ball speed. And we know that Bryson's been hitting 200 mile an hour ball speeds. So I want to teach you how to smash it and how to find it. So if you think about this, you know, increasing your speed, how do you increase your speed? You know, I love that graphic. Thanks producer Steve. That was really cool. Producing your speed is we have to have time for the club head to develop. It's time to run up into the back of the golf ball. Now, ideally, the face is going to be somewhat organized when it hits the back of the golf ball. Let me hit a couple golf balls. And I, you know, what's interesting is my friend, you know, Andrew Rice, most of you know Andrew Rice Golf. He's a good buddy of mine. And Mark Crossfield. Mark Crossfield's one of the better YouTubers. Very good player, good buddy of mine, excellent golfer, as is Andrew Rice. We've got a little contest. I sent Mark Crossfield some information today. I hit a bunch of shots with my driver for him, hit, hit 10. And I'm getting a little faster, not gonna lie. Let me go ahead and smash one, see how I do here. My speed has been up, and I'm gonna share with you this, the insights on developing my speed, what I've been doing. Let me go ahead and hit one here. So that was hit pretty hard, 110 mile an hour club head speed. And you know what, need for speed, that ball, meh, a little bit left, not gonna lie. 294 yards of carry, 162 mile an hour ball speed. Okay, so ball speed, that is still 30 miles an hour behind Rory McIlroy. Will I ever get to 191? Uh, maybe not in my lifetime. I'll be 52 in a couple weeks. That's pretty good pepper right there. Let me put one more on there. Let me talk to you guys about what we're going to do to help you develop more speed. If I can just keep keeping 162s, 162 is not too shabby. Let's go ahead and tater another one. Wider stance, golf balls in the you know, within my stance, but forward within my stance. Take a look at that club, it is off the ground. And notice how I've got some pressure back and forth for my feet. Let's go ahead and smash one here. All right, pretty good shot right there. Let's see how I did. Another 110 mile an hour club head speed. Carry to 92, 161 ball speed. So. Ladies and gentlemen, for me, that's quite smashed. Now, what am I doing and how am I gonna help you have more speed? In this series, we're gonna talk about a lot of fun things, okay? So, what are the things I'm using? And this isn't an infomercial, I just wanna share with you a couple of simple things. Speed sticks. If you've seen these, these are three graduated weight sticks. This is the middle weight, okay? You've got three of these, you've got a light, medium, and a heavy. And they've got a workout series, really simple to go through their workout series. You will get faster. What I love about these, and this one is called True Speed. Okay, True Speed, check it out. It comes with a weight on the end that you just pop on, and it comes with three different weights. I kind of like 
You know, and they're both great, but this one's only one thing that sticks out of your bag. This one's three. So you can just change this. And the end of the true speed's got this kind of little bit of a flexy thing that gives you a little bit of a sense of, it, it just gives you some sense of feel that's important. So speed sticks, fantastic. True speed, fantastic. Love them. And the whole thing with these, when you take a speed stick, guess what? You're not going to smash it into the ground. So I've been doing golf schools for, uh, we're on our 10th season at the Raven now, loving it. The first few are sold out, so thank you very much. I know everybody's freaking out about COVID, but we got a lot of open space and we wear masks when we're in the studio and we disinfect and all those good things. So come on to the golf school, but when you swing a speed stick, guess what? The, the end of this is not on the mat and nor is it going to hit the mat or the ground. The idea here is to make a really concerted effort to create as much whoosh and speed as we can create when we swing these. So again, they've got a great protocol series on how to get your body prepared to move faster. That's what we really need. Now, what are the elements? Other things I use, stretching. This is just my Planemate band, the red band. Whenever I go play, if I don't have time to go hit a bunch of balls, I'm always getting my shoulders warmed up. So the Planemate band, the red band is the strongest band. Hold it behind you, get those shoulders ready to go. Fantastic way for you to kind of get limbered up, ready to produce some speed. So when I was a kid, my mentor, George Newton, he always said to me, he goes, you know, the hands should be passive in golf. And now George is no longer with us. He passed away in 1989, mentor and dear friend. And if he was here, I think I would say, George, let's go have a cup of coffee and have a discussion. Because what becomes passive, you, when you hit enough golf balls, or say you type, or say you play um, Eddie Van Halen, rest in peace, say you rock out on a guitar, you train in that behavior so effectively, whether typing or jamming on a guitar, that something that's conscious becomes subconscious. Well, the first order of business to have speed is to have good hands. If I just held this club in my arms and I rotated super fast, I'm not going to have a whole lot of speed at the distal end. I need hands on the club effectively, and you can go back and watch a schooling of my videos. You know I'm a stickler for a good grip, but you got to hit hard with the hands. The moment of truth, this sense of getting this club from A to B, A the top of the swing to the ball, is with malice, with intent of smashing with your hands. You have to have effective hands. Now you do that enough, guess what? It becomes passive because you no longer think about it. I can assure you, I wasn't thinking about my hands and I was trying to mash those two golf balls. Let me hit one more. Let's see if I can get this up to 165 ball speed. That was my personal record the other day. So, and think about what Bryson DeChambeau does. He plays, he probably hits 12 drivers in a round of golf for 18 holes. Or Rory McIlroy, maybe they hit a few three woods, okay? There's a time you don't want to hit driver. And there's a time when you want to hit driver because the farther you hit it down range, guess what? You have a shorter club in, you're going to score better. So you think about these guys, they go up to a tee shot, they get pumped up for this tee shot. They're looking down fairway, they might have a 500 yard par four, very common on tour these days. So they've got to get their whole system geared up to smash a golf ball. They've trained it in, they built an effective grip. They're going to give this a massive rip as I am right now. Let's see how well I do. You know, and I'm not too worried about my balance when I hit this. I got to be honest with you. That's in play. And that's staying in the air quite a pretty good time right there. So that stayed in the air 288. My ball speed was 156. Not my best fractional miss hit, but a great tee ball. You can see I've had some pretty centered strikes. Those strikes, me trying to swing pretty much my hardest, have been out the center of the face. So I haven't really lost any direction. Yeah, the first one I hooked, but guess what? I would hook it if I was trying to swing easy. You know, oftentimes when you're swinging aggressively, you hit it your straightest. So don't be afraid of having effective use of the hands. Get your good hands on there. Go ahead and I want you just to kind of waggle the club. Feel like you can snap the head off the shaft. You want to build some strength in those hands? Go ahead and hold the club up here and waggle it back and forth 20 times until you get a little burn in those forearms. Okay, start to become aware and responsible for the weight of the club in your hands, that's a critical piece. So you have to smash with your hands, but what happens if your hands can't move? Well, what moves your hands 
arms and body rotation. So once we have good hands, and don't think for a second tour players don't have strong hands, even the, even the girls, they're strong, very strong. And what we have to learn how to do is get good hands on the club, and then we have to develop space so we can have create time to get that club up to speed. Watch this shot. Let's do one more here, face on down the line. And I'll tell you what my intent is. Obviously, I've got a back of the golf ball right there. I want to collect this golf ball, but I want to smash the tar out of this golf ball. No question about it. I see the back of the golf ball, getting my good hands on here. Trust me, I'm, you know, this isn't a little creative wedge shot into the green. This is something I'm absolutely trying to hammer. And I'm okay if it goes 30 yards left or 30 yards right, because if I'm not, I've, cho I've picked the wrong club for the shot at hand. A tee shot, you usually don't have to hit it within 20 yards, 285 yards away. You get a little room to miss. The fairway might be 30 or 40 yards. The rough, rough might be 20 yards on the left, 20 more yards on the right. You have a place to miss it down there, so go ahead and get after it. George Newton used to say you have to give up control to gain control. So with a golf ball forward in her stance, club off the ground. Notice the weight pressure back and forth of my feet. Club off the ground. Nice full turn. Nice full hip turn. And I'm going to let my lead heel, my left heel, come off the ground as I do this. Now it was a striper, pretty straight, a fraction on the toe, so it may not be my best ball speed. But that was a pretty good one too. That carried 293, and the ball speed wasn't great. It was 156. But what made that thing a perfect shot, you can see there's a bit of a toe contact right there. It was, you know, it was high launch, low spin, bomb. So the club got to the ball quite nicely. Now I know I can do better and I know I can go faster. And in this episode, it's kind of tricky. I want to get a 165 for y'all. And I'm, gosh, I'm going to try one more. And I know there's a bunch of whippersnappers out there that can swing it, get in the 180s. And man, that physicality, congratulations. I'm super proud of their physicality. This dude can't quite get there, but maybe with a little bit of work, a little bit of turning with my speed sticks right there. A little bit of patience to develop a nice long backswing. Let me do that on this one as long as I can, as big a hip turn as I can, and smash the tar out of it. So there's another striper that's down every middle of a fairway. Stay in the air, baby. So that was 110 mile an hour ball speed, 288 carry, 150, I'm sorry. 288 carry, 159 ball speed, 110 mile an hour club speed, not bad for me. My goal is to get five or six more miles an hour club speed, and I want to get my ball speed, you know, comfortably in the 160s. That's a goal for me. Now, how are you going to do this, guys, okay, and gals? Think about this. We've got these two feet. The driver's stance is the widest one. The ball is set up forward within our stance. So as we make this motion, we are behind the golf ball. My head is occupying this space behind the golf ball. Let me get the golf ball a bit more in frame. There we go. My head is occupying this space behind the golf ball. When I am ramping up to make my backswing, a long backswing with a full turn and a full hip turn, and if my lead heel comes off the ground, so be it. That's fantastic. But take a look at my trail leg. I haven't wandered on top of this trail leg. I've made a motion within my feet. And this is a dynamic, fast backswing where I land into my lead side. And guess what from here? I'm rotating and I'm staying behind the golf ball. As soon as you get too far forward and get ahead of it, you're going to dump all your energy. You want to stay behind it so that you can wallop it without having too much loft and spinning the ball way up into the sky because that's what happens. We see a lot of golfers come to the golf school and they have too much backspin. When you have too much backspin, you don't have effective forward momentum on the shot. You want to launch the ball up in the air with as little effective spin as needed so the ball stays in the air by spin, but doesn't spin so much it goes bzzz and then drops out of the sky. So we have to give you the right impact dynamics to do that. And in order to have this club come from this hinge, tra bent trail arm, bent trail wrist, angled shaft and left arm into impact, if you're not behind it and you get ahead of it, you're going to start to dump it and look more like this. You're going to add too much spin and lose all your power. So let's touch on one more little thing here about footwork and the magic of smashing it. 
If you watch me hit a seven iron, it's not gonna look like I'm hitting a driver. The seven iron is a scoring shot. I'm not trying to hit my seven iron a maximum distance. I have a number in mind with a seven iron. I hit seven iron about 175. That's a full peaceful rip for me. I'm not trying to hit it 210. Sometimes I'll hit it 150. Just depends on the environmental conditions. When I'm swinging a seven iron, you know, it's a fairly smooth event where you'll see me kind of be able to stand here peacefully in my finishing form on my lead heel up on my trail toe. When I'm trying to smash a driver for distance, that's not the case. I'm not too worried about my balance after the shot. I'm putting as much energy as I can into the golf ball. And if you don't think tour players are trying to smash it, you're fooling yourself. They're swinging 95%, 100% in every one they can. And if they get faster, it's, that's because they develop their speed. Even Justin Thomas recently said on golf.com, he said he wants to find more speed and that kid mauls it. Okay, everybody is searching for a centered hit that goes far. So really important to understand some of the basic, basics. Next week, we're gonna get into a lot more details on this. So I want you to come back next week and watch this. But elements you're really gonna need. I see way too many people. Look at that, look at that right screen. Turn into their backswing and maintain and actually gather flex in their trail leg. They don't let, they don't lose flex and let that, those hips really turn nice and deeply. That's a huge one. I'd say so many people that really want to hit it farther, if they would just let their trail leg, their, in my case, my right leg, lose a bit of flex, they're going to turn their hips more. If they turn their hips more, their torso can turn more, their arms can travel more, the club can get more room to run so that when it comes back to a golf ball, you have potentially more speed and impact, right? Short swings hit it short. I'm sorry. If you see a, like a, um, a John Rahm is a great example. The guy is a tank. You know, he's a good few inches taller than me and he's huge. He's a big kid. And so that big kid can afford that shortish swing of his with that, his big lower body and the way he can unwind and smash it. But most folks to hit it far need to use all the leverage they can. And most of that leverage comes from effective grip and wrist conditions and the sense of just letting the ball have it. So letting the ball have it, get that club off the ground. Remember a nice, big, big, big hip turn. I am not only am I looking over my left shoulder, I'm looking to the left of my left shoulder. This would be me staring at that face on camera, kind of cornering up, but looking out the corner of my eye, which I know is kind of creepy looking. But the fact is there for me to have this really big turn, I have to let my eyes look to my left so I can turn my shoulders more to let my arms move more. I'm not a kid anymore. And most of these folks watching this like you, you're not a kid either. You need to be able to rotate yourself enough, create enough leverage in these hands so you can angle, get enough angle that can kick out and line up and smash a golf ball. And again, you cannot get yourself ahead of it. So those are some basics to really tater it. Full hip turn, full shoulder turn. And also you guys and gals out there, don't be afraid of letting these hands kind of reach for the sky. I see far too many people that are way too pinned with their lead arm across their body. That's a really slow way to move a golf club. So my goal for this whole series is to help you develop your speed. So producer Steve has got some stuff written down for me to make sure to keep me on track. Let me go through that. We've got um, why you suck, producer Steve. Let's go why you suck. So every week people send stuff in. So I really want to thank this gentleman. And we're going to take a look at why you suck. So he sent this video to me and it's from... Um, it looks like a golf tech video and I've made a couple marks on him. Those green marks are already there and the red marks I added. He looks like a strong fella who's got really bad golf posture. Look at his backswing. Look at how he kind of leans forward into the shot comes. He's got his, he's got his centers of balance, his upper center and lower center too far away from one another. He loses his balance dynamically into the golf ball. Then his trail arm does all the work to hit it. His comment when he sent in the Why You Suck video said, Martin, let me have it. I'm prepared. And I said, okay, I'm going to let you have it. And then he uses, you know, big, strong trail arm to kind of get the club on the ball to a degree. And you can kind of see he hangs back right there. So, yep, you indeed have some issues. Now, I have no doubt that you're a good athlete and you're strong. And I certainly wouldn't be teasing you this badly if you were standing right here in front of me. Well, actually, I do. When you come to my golf school, I let you have it because I care about you and I want you to get better. But here's why you suck and here's what I want you to do. So I'm going to, just for the purposes of handling the why you suck portion of the show, I'm going to grab a seven iron because it looks like he's got a seven iron. And, 
you guys and gals out there, think about this. You've got this kind of center of balance in the middle of your chest and your booty as well. Give me a face on and down the line, producer Steve. And we, I could have myself way bent over my toes right here, and that's kind of what's happening with this fella. He's got way too much hip hinge. There's way too much difference from this middle of his chest to the middle of his hips. So when I'm hitting a seven iron right here, take notice on that I'm not way bent over. So what, what I would like to see this gentleman do is get his upper body a bit more on top of his lower body, feeling like he's a lot taller. And way too many people in an attempt to have great posture create what's known as S posture. S posture is this lower part of your back right here but when you stick your buns out and really, so this is a flatter belt line, that's not S posture. If I tilt my belt line down, so that's a tilted belt line, here's a flatter belt line. I want you to have a flatter belt line and feel like your upper body is a little bit more on top of your lower body. So in doing so now, you're not gonna, have, you're not gonna be trying to find your balance while you swing as much as you currently do. So right now you've, you're way too much bent over. During your swing, you kind of lose your posture forward. And I want to get to where when you swing, your, your body's not trying to find balance. Okay, I want you to try to get to a place that address, and you're gonna probably feel like, man, I can't be right. It feels super lazy. I feel like I'm, you know, like a old man walking down the aisle in the grocery store. Perfect, okay? Get your chest on top of your lower body. And then the sensations here, as we start to develop this action, let me just roast a seven iron for funsies here. Oh, must have been a little bit out of the range of the machine. Put one in here, there we go. Are we in space? We are in space, good. Let's go ahead and hit one because I think that as athletic as this fellow looks, very, very capable to really mash shots a long, long way with a great dynamic loft. Nice straight shot, little miss hit, not gonna fib. Yeah, so normally 175 carry, that carried a little over 160, so a little chunky. That wasn't so great, but why you suck? So here's your drill, here's your little takeaway. Here's what I want you to do. Take your left hand, forget about it, put it behind you, okay? All I want you to do is get used to this trail arm of yours and how we are going to hit these little half shots. Get your chest a little bit more on top of your lower body and let's hit these right arm only shots. Quite a few of these little guys. That squirted out to right field, that's fine. You're gonna miss some, I'm gonna miss some, no big deal. But let's get used to this sensation of letting a trail arm bend a little bit and letting our body deliver and transport these angles a little farther. Right now you're getting yourself dynamically at a posture and then you're using a really aggressive right arm to get that thing lined up. I'd much rather you have the sense of skipping a stone and that there's our kind of mirror pond right there. There's our great little stone and how many can we transport that action by rotating, letting the weight of the club kind of keep that trail wrist bent a little bit as we unwind to smash it. You just need a little bit more of that unwinding of a bent trail arm and trail wrist. And I think you're gonna do well, but it all starts with a bit better posture. So that's why you suck. Hopefully that helps you. Let's move on to drills for speed basics. Drills for your skills. So I'm gonna pull the driver back out. I think I knocked all my tees are all over the yard here. Let me grab one of these. Perfect. And they all come back and kill producer Steve back there. He's gotta wear shop goggles when he does the show. So this is the sensation of your drills for your skills, okay? Now, I don't have the ability to play a slow-mo back for you. We're working on that. Hopefully we can do that. But here's what I need. I need softness at the top. I call it structured softness. And I want to see if I can see this golf club out of the corner of my left eye. Okay, I know I can't, but when I was a kid, when I, was a kid I could. So here's the sense of this. We are going to pay really close attention to the periphery, and I could see it that time. So we need time for your swing to have enough length so it can get up to speed to hit a golf ball. So one of your drills, let's make some back swings, pay a lot of attention to your periphery, this area right up in here to see if you can get this golf club to pop into that periphery. Doesn't, have to, doesn't take much, just a little bit. If you can see that there, 
there's a really good chance your swing is long enough to develop a lot of speed. Now I'm not saying go back there and you know fold your arms and drop them on your body. That's not what I'm saying at all. We need a turn to do that. Okay, so that's one of your drills. Your next drill is footwork to feel that sense of pressure in the feet. And if you watch the long drive guys right now, they even some of them even rock. And then and when they step onto their trail foot the last time, that's the momentum they use to really sling the weight of the club back up into a position to where they can go A to B really hard back into the golf ball, right? So we've got to start to become a lot more aware of creating this stretch cycle of our backswing, this stretch rotation, this counter rotation, and then this extension. And then you've got to be able to use your hands. You've got to be able to strike hard with your hands. So here's a great exercise with your hands. We're going to get our good hands on there. And all you're going to do is use your hand. Let's see how far I can use. I can smash it out there just with my hands. So how much body did I use on that one? So that ball is going I was 69 miles an hour club head speed. The ball went 160. Let me do another one of those. Now I know I'm using hands and a bit of right arm. There's no doubt about it. And a little corresponding corresponding pivot, but I'm honestly trying not to pivot. I want to hit the back of the ball as hard as I can with my hands. You can see my intent with my waggle right there. Let me do it again. Okay, so that is all hands. And people say, oh, Martin, I don't want to swing with all hands. I know you don't want to swing with all hands, but we have to be able to smash with our hands and deliver it, deliver that smash by transporting it with our body. So once you can feel those things, pressure in the ground, and how that last step on the trail foot helps wind things up, creating enough swing length in your backswing, and then effective use of smashing with your hands. So putting it all together, take a look at this and tell me if this even remotely looks like what I just said, because drills oftentimes don't necessarily look like the finishing form. So if I set this up there and just give this a full on send, And that was hit pretty good, I have to say. 111 club head speed, a little bit left, not too bad. Mild miss hit, 159 ball speed, 277 carry, just a fraction spinny. But pretty good, little bit toe side. So George Knudsen, mentor, said, you have to give up control to gain control. If you're gonna take the head cover off the driver, guess what, hit it with malice. Okay, don't, if you're gonna, if you wanna swing easy at something, hit something else, all right? When you hit this club, and here's another thing about the driver. If you don't love your driver, go find one that you love, okay? I'm gonna be honest, this is my Hanma. This was the second one. The first one I got wasn't quite right, wasn't quite heavy enough, spun it too much. Now I absolutely tater this thing. I had to get fit and tweak it a little bit to make it fit me. I want you to absolutely love your driver. So whether you go get a high-end fitting or just spend some time with a pro who knows what they're doing to get you with the right loft, with the right kick shaft, the right overall weight, a comfortable grip, so that you can't wait to get on the tee box and swing this thing and send it and have it go somewhat reasonably in play. Because I'm not trying to hit it down the middle of every fairway. That'd be great, but that's a pipe dream. I am just trying to rip it and have it land reasonably in play out there without excessive curve one way or the other. And that's basically all pros are really doing. And that's what you should be doing is letting things go, freeing up. Think about these little basic things that I shared with you today. That's going to help you a ton. So we are going to basically the next few weeks, we're just going to get a little bit more in depth, a little deeper dive into the speed elements. Um, advanced skills next week so come on back I want to thank my sponsors nike thank you for keeping me keeping this old guy looking as good as he can i appreciate it foresight obviously hanma loving my hanma gear it's fantastic i hopefully somebody watching this was one of the winners of the 21 days of hanma giveaways it was a fantastic promotion they won thank you so much and who am i forgetting oh true spec the best club fitters there are Get on the TrueSpec website and get yourself some Hanmas or get whatever you want because they are brand agnostic. They'll, they'll fit you in whatever performs the best for you. And it's Martin Chuck wishing you a beautiful, fantastic Saturday with some golf in it. And I'm going to hit one more. 
And I'm going to hit this thing like I really don't like it because I want you to hit driver like you are just angry at it and have some fun because I'll tell you what, when you smash one out of the middle of the face, mm -mm, that's some good times. All right, here we go. Andrew Rice, Mark Crossfield. This is you, baby. I'm going to absolutely send this one. Let's go for 300 in the air right here. Oh, that was melted. Absolutely melted. Come on, babies. Stay in the air. Stay in the air. Oh, 290 in the air. 164 ball speed. Which way to the beach? Huh? All right. So closing out the show. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next week.